Wait a second, we looking kinda crispy. So a couple weeks ago, I dropped a basic serum tutorial, just kinda showing you guys how I made bases. And I got a lot of good feedback from that video, so I figured I would continue the series. And in today's video, we're gonna focus on how to make key presets. Just like the last video, I'm gonna show you guys some of my favorite key presets from my own banks and just kind of go through them step by step and show you guys how I ended up with that final preset. Then after that, we're gonna take all of the elements that we go over and make a couple presets from scratch. This video will probably be shorter than the first one I did just because I'm not gonna go over all of the various elements of Serum in general. If you've never used Serum and you wanna know a little bit more about how to actually use the VST, Definitely go watch the first video in this series and I go over all of the different buttons and knobs and everything you really need to get started using Serum. But for now, let's hop into FL and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of my favorite key presets. All right, so I got three different presets opened up here and I have the same MIDI on all three of them just so you guys can hear kind of the difference between them all. This first preset is a pretty just basic key. I like to have at least a couple of these in every Serum bank that I make just because they're very universal and can be used for whatever type of loop. So I'll just play this preset so you guys can hear what it sounds like first. So as you can hear, it's pretty much just like a basic kind of bell sounding key. One thing I really love to do with key presets right away is to just get the overall shape of the envelope drawn. And what I normally do is I'll keep the attack pretty low so you get that sort of punch at the beginning. And then I'll turn the hold all the way down and I'll turn this decay slightly up to maybe like two-ish seconds. Then I will turn the sustain to about halfway percent and what this does is that it just makes it so when the sound plays, it's dipping in volume as the sound goes on. And then I added a little bit of release just because that gives it a little bit of humanizing and lets it so when you let go of the MIDI note, it'll play for just a little bit. It won't just stop immediately. Then I just have this basic bright white noise on there that just kind of gives it a little bit of texture. And then for a lot of my key presets, the oscillator, I'll usually pick just a basic sine wave because it produces the cleanest sound in my opinion. And then I turn the unison up to seven just to give it a lot more voicings and width to the sound. And then you can see I have a couple of these LFOs drawn out. This one is just a basic um, kind of like slope. And I routed that to the wavetable position. That just kind of gives it a tiny, tiny bit of instability to the sound. So it makes it a little bit more real sounding. Then I have just a cutoff, um, just a basic MG low 12 preset. That's basically just rolling off a lot of the highs, so it's not like too piercing. Then we go over to the effects panel, which is my favorite thing to mess with for keys. I feel like you can do a lot with these. So first off, I have just this filter and I'm using the sample hold preset, which is basically just adding a little bit of like bit crushing to the sound. And so depending on how much you turn this cutoff knob, it'll add or subtract um, the amount of bit crush that's happening. Then we have just a delay that is pretty basic. Um, it's not really doing too much. I just turn the ping pong on, turn the mix down a little bit, and I turn the feedback down pretty low just because I don't want the sound lasting a long time. Then we got just a reverb. What I always do for every single reverb is turn the low cut um, to a little bit less than 50%. That just makes it so the reverb is not applying to the low end of your sound, um, which can really muddy it up if you don't have this on. Then I have this second envelope um, with this shape drawn out and that's routed over to the reverb mix. And so you can see when it plays, um, it's kind of adding a little bit of reverb to each MIDI note. So you can see it immediately when the note plays, there's no reverb, but as the note progresses, it kind of brings in a little bit of reverb. Then we just have a compressor to kind of glue everything together and then an EQ to cut out a lot of the lows and a little bit of the highs. Moving on to this next sound, it's from my 2K Serum Bank and it's called the Wii preset. Now this preset is a little bit more experimental and I will show you guys the MIDI so you can hear uh, what it's doing. So you can hear it's like super ambient. 
the notes don't actually play like they don't line up with when the midi note is playing so first off we just have this sub um, it's real low in the level and it kind of increases as the sound progresses and this is like this is what gives it that sort of like delayed feeling is that when the note initially plays the sound isn't really turned on but as it progresses over the two bars the volume turns up so you get kind of like that increasing in volume effect then we have this oscillator turned on to this shape and it's just basically giving it a tiny tiny bit of like grit to the sound it's really almost unnoticeable but it kind of helps just add a tiny bit of tone to the sound and that's pitched up an octave and this is doing the same thing with the level and then for the envelope i have this sort of just like real short envelope that's acting as almost like a pluck so we just have the attack same as where it usually is the hold down the decay is pretty low on this one just because i don't want the sound to be drawn out super long the sustain is all the way down because like i said i don't i want the sound to play and then kind of dip and then i have a little bit of release to just add that humanizing factor and then as usual we have just another filter on that's cutting off a lot of the high end so then for the effects on this one i have this hyper dimension turned on which is basically just like a wit and i have the mix turned up here and the mix turned down here then you have the delay this is where a lot of the uniqueness comes in for the sound as the sound is playing that sort of pluck pattern it's a real short sound but the delay is carrying it like across the entirety of the four bars or whatever you're playing so that's just got this feedback at 50%. That's what kind of draws it out for a long time. Then the mix is all the way up and, he, and it's on ping pong. So it's really, this sound really relies heavily on this delay. Then you just got a reverb kind of the same as last time. Um, just turn that low cut up. Then we got another filter that's just cutting off more of the highs just because I, again, the sound was kind of piercing to begin with. So you turn that on and it kind of gets rid of that high end. Then we got a compressor again to just kind of glue the sound together and another EQ to cut a lot of the lows and the highs out. So then we got this next preset. This one is a little bit more on like the virtual side. Um, it's called Key Torch. It's from me and Gateway's Blackout Sound Kit. So you can definitely hear it has a lot more virtual elements to it and it also has a lot of movement to it which is why i wanted to go over this one so again we have just a basic sine wave i i kid you not i use a sine wave in probably like all of my keys it's just the cleanest sound in my opinion and then we have this bleak accent now this is a thing that i talked about in the last video but the use of just like one shots or textures or anything that you can drag into this noise section can add a ton of character to these sounds. So I think this is just some accent that I found from a one shot kit that I dragged in here and just messed with the pitch and the leveling. The envelope is pretty standard for a key. Again, the attack where it is, the hold is all the way down. The decay is set to about three seconds. This time I turn the sustain all the way down because I don't want the sound to play for too long and then i turned up the release just a tiny bit then what gives this loop the most character is the lfo shapes now this lfo i think is from a different kit but i ended up just saving it and then reusing it for this uh, sound it's just this real like funky pattern that is routed to the cutoff knob then you have this peak here that is sort of like shifting the frequencies back and forth and making them louder and quieter as the sound plays so you can see it move here So then on the effects, uh, it's pretty much the basic stuff as always. I have the hyper dimension to give it some width. I have another delay on it. The delay is also routed to um, this LFO. So it's just another kind of funky shape. And this just kind of adds a little bit more texture. So the delay isn't playing like through the entire thing. It's kind of turning on and off as the sound goes. Just gives it a little bit more character. Then we have a reverb. And the reverb again is routed to another LFO. And it's doing the same thing of just kind of turning it on and off randomly. So it just adds a little bit of texture and a little bit of like randomness. Then we have a compressor and the compressor, what I did for this one is I turned this multiband on and this just kind of gives the sound a lot more like high end and kind of bit crushed almost texture. Then the EQ I have uh, routed again to that initial LFO 
and that is just kind of sifting through the high frequencies as well kind of similar to what the cutoff was doing um, but this is just in this eq filter and then i have the lows being cut out so that's really it for all of these um, they're all different kind of styles of presets you have one clean one one kind of ambient spacey one more experimental and then the last one being more on like the virtual kind of has that like motion to it so with all of that stuff um, that we talked about i'm gonna open up a new file and then we are going to make a preset from scratch so what I always like to do when I'm making presets is just drag a MIDI in from one of my kits. Um, so we'll just go to the whiteout kit. We'll go to the MIDI folder. So I have a ton of these tables. Um, you might not have all of these banks, or if you do, there's just so many different tables you can pick from. But what I like to do is just go to the analog and I just get a basic sign for my keys. And I'm gonna turn the attack up a little bit. Like we said, I'm gonna turn the decay to about two. Turn the sustain down to roughly 10% maybe. And then leave this release just up a little bit. So already we have this. So what I'm gonna do right off the bat is I hear a lot of low end, so I'm gonna take an EQ, turn this little cutoff at the bottom, turn the frequency up just a little bit. And then this Q knob is gonna control this peak here. So if I turn it down, uh, it flattens it out. So then we have that. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of reverb. Turn this low cut up. One thing I like to do to give a little bit of humanizing too is I'm gonna take this LFO and we're gonna route it to this fine pitch section and then hover over the blue circle and click and drag down until we're at about 10. And then I'm gonna take this and turn it up to about 16. This is gonna make the sound wobble back and forth like really fast, um, which kind of gives it a little bit of that detuning feeling. So I'm gonna turn on this filter and just kind of take a tiny bit of the highs off. They're already pretty good where they are, but I'm gonna take a little bit off. Then I'm gonna add maybe a little bit of chorus. I always turn this BPM sync on just so it matches with whatever you're playing at. So then I'm gonna go into just like a random one-shot kit. So I found this cloud synth and I just dragged it over to the noise section and just kind of messed with the level and the pitch. And it just kind of adds a little bit of high end to it that I like. So I'm gonna might turn on the delay. So this is a really nice key in my opinion. It's just super simple. You can use it for whatever. So I'm gonna save this one and then we'll make another one that's kind of more like unique and experimental. All right, so we got a different MIDI loaded up and I'm gonna kind of just scroll through these until I find something that sounds cool.
cool little trick I learned is if you want a super stereo sound to turn on the delay and turn the, um, the left and the right all the way down to one over 256 and then turn the ping pong on and turn these about halfway up. So I found this cool little noise. Um, we're just gonna use that one. And this is what the preset is sounding like so far. I might mess with some of these tables. So I think that one's sounding pretty cool as well. It's a little bit basic, but you can see we did a lot with like the filters and sweeping and the LFOs and all that stuff. That's pretty much how I would go about designing presets um, for keys. Um, like I said before, it's a lot of just trial and error, messing around. You know, you could make like 15 of these a day and end up only keeping two of them if you want. The more you do it, the more you'll just learn little techniques and what sounds cool and what doesn't work and yeah. So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it as always. I hope you guys learned something. Um, for the next video, we'll probably do either leads or like pads or something. Um, let me know what you guys would wanna see in the comments. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, all that stuff. Follow me on Instagram and I will see you guys later. Peace.